Right now is a great time to be shopping for a Windows laptop. If you are a power user or just looking for something that can handle a light workload, there are many great tablets, two-in-ones, and gaming notebooks on the market today. But to Microsoft has made the Service Book 2, which kind of tries to combine all of those elements into one. Does it succeed? Today we're going to take a look at the 13-inch i7 model. Taking a look at the specs, there are currently four different versions of the Service Book 2 that you can get. The entry level model for $14.99 comes with an i5, which is completely fanless, which is really nice. But the base does not have a GPU integrated into it. So that would be the lowest end model. I probably wouldn't even recommend that model. Uh, stepping up to $19.99, you get an i7 with eight gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD, as well as the 1050 with two gigs of RAM for the graphics there. So that would be the probably the entry level point, I would say, for most people looking for a service book if you want to jump into this device. Stepping up even further for $24.99 and 13 inch, that's probably the sweet spot. You get 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD, along with the same i7 CPU mixed with the 1050 graphics and obviously up to $29.99, you get the same system just with a one terabyte uh, SSD. If you're getting a Surface Book, make sure you get it specced out with what you want because other than adding an SD card slot, you can't upgrade the memory or the RAM. So make sure you get the system specced out how you want it for the long run. The Surface Book 2 is one of the more interesting devices available on the market today. As soon as you take a look at it, you'll notice it's, just, it's distinctive kind of round hump and space in between the back of the screen and the front of the screen. Pretty much all the components are in the top shell here. You have your processor, your RAM, your storage, all that fun stuff in the top portion with a small battery. The base just has a larger battery as well as the GPU. So you gotta have a little different hinge mechanism here. It's very interesting the way that they did it. Uh, at first I didn't really like it, First time I saw it, I was like, yeah, that kind of looks goofy, but it's definitely grown on me since then. And now that I might actually have one and I see it and I use it in my hands, it's, it's really nice. It's really smooth and it works very well. Taking a look at the ports on the right side, we have the power connector, Microsoft's proprietary magnetic port there, as well as a USB-C 3.0 port. Unfortunately, that's not Thunderbolt but we'll take what we can get at this point. You can do monitor out and you can charge through there. It'll just be a little bit slower. And on the right side or the left side, I'm sorry, we have two USB, USB 3.0 ports as well as a full size micro SD card slot. So it's really nice if you're a creator, you still get that full size micro SD card. Uh, that's very, very unique these days, especially if you're rocking a MacBook Pro. You're probably missing that slot because I know I use it all the time. Around the front, you'll find a slot where you can open up the laptop with one finger. You'll also see on the top, the power and volume buttons. The only port or connector that you will find on the top portion of the Surface Book is the headphone jack. That's so if you're using it in tablet mode, you can still plug headphones in. The air venting on the top panel goes around all three sides. It lets air get to all the components. This is a passively cooled i7, so that it becomes very important having that much ventilation, and it does work well. For styling, Microsoft put a shiny silver Microsoft logo on the top of the Surface Book. Honestly, I don't like this. It's like a mirror finish. It's a magnet for fingerprints. And I wish they would go back to just the matte dark gray style that they had on the older like Surface Book or Surface Pro 3 and devices like that. Underneath, you won't find anything. It's really Spartan looking, just nice and clean. You see the feet and that's it. The keyboard and trackpad are both excellent. This is one of the best mobile keyboards I have ever used. It has good key travel, but it doesn't feel mushy at all. It's not shallow like the new MacBook Pro is. It feels really good when you type on it. It's not super loud either. It's not clicky, but it has a really nice tactile feel. Three-stage backlighting on the keyboard, so you can see it in the daytime, at night, whatever you want to do. The trackpad is glass. It's very nice, especially for a Windows trackpad. No problems there. It's not the biggest. There are laptops with bigger trackpads, but I had absolutely no issues with the trackpad and I found it to be pleasing to use on a daily basis. The star of the show on the Surface Book would be the 13.5 inch Pixel Sense display. It has a resolution of 3000 by 2000. It's a 3.2 aspect, aspect ratio and it produces super crisp, accurate images. If you are doing photo editing or any kind of work that requires an accurate image, this laptop is phenomenal. When I'm doing my Photoshop, you know, making my thumbnails or doing graphics for the website or anything, this is a great display. It comes factory calibrated, so you don't have to worry about that. 
and the pixel density is phenomenal. It looks stunning. The display also gets very bright. Now, if you're outdoors in direct sunlight, it's not bright enough to really handle that, but most laptops aren't. Uh, any other situation, it is plenty bright and you won't have any issues there. Attaching the tablet from the base is a lot simpler this year. It takes less time than prior Surface Books and it works pretty much every time. I haven't had an issue with it once yet, where I know a lot of people reported in the past that it was a little finicky, not anymore. The hinge mechanism has been updated since the old Surface Book. I remember using the older Surface Books and having that wobbly screen. Yes, it's still a little wobbly, but when you have it and you're typing on it, it doesn't shake it like it used to, in my opinion at least. I think it's dramatically improved and more stable. It's really impressive. All the bugs and little niggles that were involved with the older ones seem to have been ironed out with the Surface Book 2. You're getting a much more complete experience uh, with this product. The one thing I did not like about the build quality was the actual feet that Microsoft used on the underside. There are stri two strips that span pretty much the whole length of the device, but they're not sticky enough. They're not really rubber, like a rubberized plastic it feels, and they slide on smooth surfaces. So it's not secure there. Uh, this obviously isn't a major issue, but just something to note. To power this whole unit, you get a 95 watt power brick. It is pretty small and compact. It's a little thicker than the Surface Pro one that you got. If you've had a Surface Pro in the past, it looks very similar, has the same USB pass through, but it does give you 95 full watts. Unlike the bigger 15 inch model, I've heard reports of that sucking up too much power for its power brick. I can confirm that the i7 13 inch does not do that. Gaming, rendering, whatever you're doing, uh, it has enough juice and it will continue to charge the laptop while you are performing maximum CPU and GPU tests. It's also cool to note that you can charge just the tablet portion as well as just the base separately. So you can charge them both together or separately with the same dongle. Microsoft rates the Surface Book 2 for 17 hours of battery life. That test was done on video. Uh, so it's not gonna be real world everyday use that you're getting at that level of, ba of battery life. I can confirm that if you're playing local files, uh, it does last forever. I got well over 14 hours of playback time with local uh, 1080p media. But when you're going to do regular tasks, you know, browsing the internet, you know, you, you know, doing regular Excel worksheets, Word, that sort of thing, I was getting around eight, eight and a half hours. So definitely enough to get you through a regular work day or school day. Uh, it really does have great battery life. Microsoft is doing some good things with power management. If you're gonna game, uh, you're not gonna get great battery life. Gaming, just playing Overwatch, uh, I was getting around two and a half hours, maybe three, if I drop down the resolution and the settings, uh, but just expect around two and a half hours there for gaming. The speakers on this laptop are really good. They are both front facing. You can find them on the tablet portion here. They're super loud. And they sound pretty good. So they've got good bass uh, for their size. For laptop speakers, you really can't uh, do much better in a tablet portion. All of that design and attention to detail and looks are great, but how does it perform? Luckily, this little machine is a monster. I was stunned by how well it ate up all the programs that I threw at it. Obviously, I do a lot of video editing. I'm in Photoshop all day, regular Excel tasks for work, that sort of thing. Um, it really just handled everything I threw at it without an issue at all. Taking a look at some quick CPU benchmarks, you can see that it benchmarks very well for a four core 15 watt part. I mean, you're really getting all the performance out of that chip that you can while being passively cool. One of the biggest questions I'm sure people have about this is how does it game? How's the actual gaming performance? Well, thankfully it's pretty good. Uh, you have a full fat GTX 1050 with two gigs of RAM. This isn't a max Q. In most casual titles, I was able to hit 60 frames per second easily. Overwatch was a breeze on this. Cuphead, Battlegrounds, any of those kind of games, you should be totally fine. If you're gonna play more demanding games, you might have to roll back the resolution a little bit, drop it down to 720p, or just drop the details down. But you should be fine with most games, 1080p, and medium to high settings. And it's really nice. It's got a good game experience. The screen is really, really beautiful. You get nice, rich colors in there and good blacks. So you should be Totally fine if you want to pick this up, casual gamer, if you play League of Legends or those kind of games where it doesn't have a super demanding load on the GPU, you might not even spin up the fan. Fan noise on the Surface Pro is very interesting. Uh, under a normal load, you won't hear the fans at all. There's no fan in the top portion cooling the CPU. There is one in the base for the GPU, uh, but unless you really, really push it, you're not going to hear it. So for example, I was playing Cuphead and it didn't even spin up at all. But when you went into Overwatch, uh, it definitely spins up and it is fairly loud, it's got a nice whoosh sound.
but it's nothing that'll disturb you if you have the speakers up like I have them on here. Or obviously if you have on headphones, you're not gonna hear it at all. It's not distracting at all. It's a very nice, even uh, low tone. It's not a high pitch whine or anything like that. So nothing to worry about there. The drive speeds on the Surface Book 2 were interesting. You do get very nice, very nice read speeds. The write speeds leave a lot to be desired though. I'm not really sure what's going on there from an NVMe drive and a device that costs this much. The drive speed should be on par, I would, I would hope at least with, like I say, a 960 Evo or something like that. At least I want to be in the thousand range for writes. I'm not really sure what's going on. Hopefully a firmware update can fix that issue. Rendering of 1080p 60 footage like this video was totally smooth. Render times are pretty good as well. So a, I did a test five minute clip and it took around five minutes, 30 seconds uh, to 5.45. I rendered it a couple times, which is really, really pretty good for a mobile device. One of the more underrated features of the Surface Book is being able to detach the tablet portion on top and carry it around and use it as a tablet. This is actually really useful. I do this a lot. If you're ever using a tablet, you like to do casual games, you like to relax on the couch, just chill out. This is a great device. You can just pick this up and you have about three to four hours of use. It's rated for five, but in actual use, I'm getting around three or four just casual web browsing, watching videos on YouTube, that sort of thing. But it's really, really cool. You can take this around. You can actually use the camera and do AR stuff. So you can look around the room, some of the apps and cool stuff that they have coming out. It's really useful. And at 13.5 inches, it's not too big. That was my issue with the bigger 15 inch model. That tablet portion is just too heavy and too large for it to be used comfortably as an actual tablet in my opinion. But this, this little tablet portion here is really nice. I had a Surface Pro 3 before this. this was, that was my previous computer that I would use on the go. And this guy is much lighter, uh, much bigger and brighter than that one was and more powerful. You have your full i7 still with just integrated 620 graphics instead. The Surface Book also does support pen input. It has a, they have a brand new pen with tilt and pressure sensitivity, all that good stuff. It's an extra $100, not included with this package, but in tablet mode, once again, if you're taking notes, going in a meeting, just pop it out, just write something real quick. It's super, super convenient. And once again, a really nice experience. I've been using the Surface Book for a few weeks now. I could have pumped out this review obviously a lot faster, but I wanted to make sure I got a good handle on the device, its capabilities, its limitations, and how good or bad it was. I know in the past, there were a lot of reviews of these things being a little finicky, especially with the dock connector, releasing the tablet, battery life, gaming performance, all that stuff. Well, I'm happy to report that as you saw all the tests earlier, uh, this thing really is a mini beast. It is compact, it's relatively light, all things considered, and it's super powerful. It handles pretty much everything I'd wanna do with a mobile computer, and it handles it well, while also handling light duties and maintaining excellent battery life. So should you get a Surface Book? Well, that depends on how you're intending on using it. If you have no use for a touchscreen, you have no use for a detachable tablet, you don't need integrated graphics, uh, you don't need pen input, then maybe just look for a regular laptop. If, you, if these are things that you actually do like, if you need a powerful tablet that can also be docked and you wanna play games, you wanna do some video editing, you wanna do a little bit of everything kind of the way that I use it, then it's a phenomenal device. There are very few devices that can handle gaming, rendering, as well as just casual tablet use all in one. There are a few things that they could improve. For one, adding a Thunderbolt port in there, that would be wonderful if you could connect a full fat like 1080 on your desktop when you're at home with the four core CPU, that'd be really, really nice. I also noticed that there was a slight bit of ghosting on the screen, uh, just when you're moving around objects really fast, you can kind of see a little bit. In gaming, I didn't really notice it affecting too much. Uh, if you're a super ultra competitive gamer, this probably isn't the device for you anyway, but it, casual gaming has absolutely no effect. It's just something that I noticed coming from super fast displays. I also wish that Microsoft would include a second drive bay in the base so you could have, for content creators, you could have dual drives. I think that would be really nice, a uh, nice touch that would really separate it even further from MacBook Pros and other computers in this space. 
but overall it is a great device if you pick one up you can stomach the price that is uh it is really fantastic you really can't go wrong it'll be able to eat up anything that you have to throw at it and you won't be disappointed if you want to know more i'll drop links below for the full written review on the website as well as links out if you want to pick one up for yourself as always i'm jay this is tech everything please like comment and subscribe if you like the video i'll see you next time